The ending of this story is so tragic and sad, you'll just have to hear it to believe it. But before we get into today's story, if you're a fan of speedruns, ridiculous content, and trans rights, then you've come to the right place, because that's all we do. Um, and I upload once or twice every other month. So, if that's what you're looking for, then please act as if your name is Kyle. You just smash two Monster Energy drinks, and uh, the like button is drywall. Please like and subscribe to my channel, and turn on all notifications so you don't miss any of my quarterly content. Alright, now let's get into the story. Debbie Harry, or as she was nicknamed Blondie, was born in 1927 in a town called Satik in Romania to Patrick and Margaret Harry. Um, Blondie's parents didn't have a lot of money and they lived in a rural town, so growing up Blondie mostly played by the river down by her house. But her eye would sometimes wander into the forest uh, beyond, and she wondered what was in there. But her mother always told her, Blondie, don't you go into that forest. There's a lot of bad stuff in there, and it's dangerous. So Blondie, being a good kid, she never strayed, and she never went in there. And she listened to her mother because she respected her. But one day, there was nothing to do. She didn't have any food. She hadn't eaten in a couple days. And she decided to, unfortunately, make this trek into the forest to find some food or maybe just see what's up with it. So she walks down this winding path and as she's walking, she keeps walking and then she eventually finds this house. And the first thing she notices about this house is that it has a big wide door. The door is really wide and it's such a small short door. And she wonders, she doesn't really know what's going on with this door but she thinks it's kind of interesting. and. The way she has to walk down this path, it goes right by where the house is. So the house is here, goes down by the path here, and she sees a window, and it's open in the house. And she looks in the window, looks to the table that's in the house, and she sees three bowls. And there's steam coming off of it, and she kind of sees maybe there looks like there's food in those bowls. And I'm going to get inside to investigate, and against her better judgment, she goes inside, climbs through the window, gets inside, she walks over the table, with the first bowl she examines, chicken noodle soup, and she looks at it, she takes a taste, and she thinks, oh, this is pretty bland, there's not a lot going on with it, I'm, I'm gonna shelve that one, next, next soup. So she goes to the next bowl, and she makes her way over there and it's a gumbo and she takes another bite and she's like, eh, there's a little too much going on with this. It's not really my thing. So I'm gonna move on. Next bowl. So she goes to the next bowl and it's a broccoli cheddar. And she takes a bite. Mm, it's pretty good. I like that, I'm digging it. So she gets up, takes the bowl with her and she walks to where there's a set of stairs and she walks up the staircase, she looks, and she sees the first room, which is the master bedroom. And so she just walks in there, she kind of examines, there's a big wide bed, kind of like the door was wide, and it's a big wide bed, there's not really like any other furniture or anything like that in the room, uh, just this bed, there's no mirrors, no dressers. So she goes and she sits on the bed and she notices it's really, hairy, there's a lot of animal hair, and she doesn't really understand what's going on with that, but she's really hungry and she's kind of tired from walking, so she takes a rest and lays down on the bed with her bowl of broccoli cheddar and starts going to town. As she starts eating, she only gets a couple bites in when her heart drops. She started to hear the front door slowly being opened. And she kept listening and she started to hear huffing and puffing and just sort of like heavy breathing. And it was, it was really perplexing her. What is going on here? Um, so she takes her bowl, still holding the bowl. She comes out 
She comes out to peek around and she looks toward the front door. And when she looks toward the front door, she sees three bears. She immediately throws the bullet cheddar down the stairs. She looks at the end of the hallway and she sees there's one of those pull cord addicts, but the cord has already been pulled, so it's already deployed. So the stairs are there to get into the attic. So she rushes, she gets up the stairs in the attic, and this is where the tale turns even more tragic for her. As she went up the stairs, she made her way up the stairs, she gets up onto the roof, she pulls up herself, and she pulls up the attic swing mechanism. She pulls the swing mechanism hard enough to where it completely closes the door. She thinks she's okay for now. She hears the bears kind of rustling around, sniffing, and just breathing heavy. After she pulled the attic stairs up, she was in this room, she felt safe um, from the bears, and she started to take a couple steps into the attic. But when she did, on the second step, she stepped on a creaky floorboard and it gave way and she completely fell through. But where she fell through was about an eight to 10 inch slot in the wall. And so she got wedged up against the start of this room and the end of this room. And so she was effectively stuck. She knew she was in a bad place. Nobody really knew she was here other than these bears and they certainly weren't gonna do anything for her. And she was stuck up against this wall and she tried to claw through the drywall. She tried to scream, but of course the bears, that's all that were there and she's in the secluded woods. There's nobody around. After a while, things must have really set in for her and it must have just been a horrible, agonizing way to go out. Her parents didn't even know what happened to her until 25 years later when the building was demolished and then her skeletal remains were found in the rubble. Thank you so much everyone for watching this. This was really fun to do. Um, shout out to Mr. Ballin and um, shout out to all of you for just like watching my video. It's super cool. Anyway, just 